Okay, church, can we read as a mass choir? Can we do this together? I want to go. And the next unto him was Kashna, Sheta, Admata, Tashish, Meris, Masena, and Memuka. Memu, the seven princes of Pesha and Media, which saw the king's face and which sat first in the kingdom. All right, let's go to 3, verse 1. Chapter 3, verse 1. All right, can we do it together? I think that first one you did not do because you were trying to pronounce the name. So, but this one you can, we, we can do it together, right? One to go. After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. Verse 4 to 6. Now it came to pass, when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand, for he had told them that he was a Jew. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reference, then was Haman full of wrath. For they had showed him the people of... What did he say there? Let's read that verse. Can we start from the beginning again? And he taught... Verse 6. From the, and he taught scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone. For they had showed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus. Even the people of Mordecai. 5 verse 15. Then said Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends unto him, Let a gallows be made of fifty cubits high, and tomorrow speak thou unto the king, that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. Then go thou in merrily with the king unto the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman, and he caused the gallows to be made. 6.13 And Haman told Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends, everything that had befallen him. Then said his wise men and Zeresh, his wife, unto him, If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews before whom thou hast begun to fall, thou shalt not prevail against him, but shalt surely fall before him. Father, we ask that let this be all about you. Speak to us in a language that we understand, O God. Lord, no man, no woman is permitted to live here without their new. We are carrying our evidence this morning in Jesus' mighty name. To Today we are looking at the mistakes Haman made that no one should make when their new comes. Ten people from choir, please quickly come. Quickly come, ten people. The mistakes Haman made that no one should make when their new comes. I know that normally when we talk about Haman, we are always quick to throw fire at Haman, right? Even till tomorrow, I will still make that prayer and I will still tell you shout fire against every Haman of our destiny. But you know, while reading this scripture, it just occurred to me that Haman was one man that entered his knew but he mismanaged it you don't understand hey man actually had an opportunity god gave him but he messed up the opportunity so we read the first place we read we know the book of esther so well that's why i just tried to pick so i'm trusting god that everybody under the sound of my voice knows esther's story very well so i'm just going to pick in verses to you know to make you understand what I want to say today. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven people, move this way. Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is this seven? All right. Now let us give them their names. And the Bible says in chapter one, verse 14, we have Kashena. You are Kashena. You are Kashena. You are Sheta. You are Admata. You are Tashish. You are... Are you Tashish? Meres. Meres, yeah? Number four. One, two, three, four. Tashish, she's Tashish. Then you are Maris. You look like Maris. <laughs> As if I know what Maris looks like. Masena, and you are Memu. He's the Memu. He's Memu Khan. All right. So, church, please follow me. The Bible says that this seven princes of Persia and Media, which saw the king's face. Can we see it in message translation? This same scripture in message translation. Just so that they have a picture. Yes. The Bible says the seven highest ranking princes of Persia and Media, the inner circle with access to the king's ear. These were the seven. Please, did you hear Haman's name here? Haman was not one of the seven. These seven people, please, here, they were the seven highest ranking princes amongst all the princes. And they had access to the ears of the king. That means anything. They, if, 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 if they speak, the king will listen to them. Seven of them. We don't know where Haman was. But from if you go now, now we have established this. Take us to that scripture. Yes, God bless you. Now, if you now go to verse, uh, verse 1 of chapter 3. After these things, the king Ahasuerus promotes Haman, the son of Hamedatha, the Agagite, and advanced him. Meaning that Haman was a prince. 
He was one of the princes, but he was not one of the seven. Naaman got a promotion and an advancement. Do you know what a promotion is? If it was just a promotion, why the Bible took time to say he was still advanced? Is that what he got was more than a promotion. In the word promotion, one of the synonyms is advanced. But the Bible still specially put an advanced team. Meaning that promoting a person is to put the person on a higher rank, right? But now he was not just placed on a higher rank. Let's even say even if Haman was number eight or he was number ten person, if he was going to be promoted, where would he move to? He would just move to, let's say, even if he would come to this place or he would come to this place. But how do you come from? I don't know. The Bible didn't tell us what place he was in, but I don't even believe he was the number eight prince in the line of things. But let's even assume he was number eight. Let's even assume he was number eight. A man left. This is more than a promotion. He walked past all these people and he got to this place and became number one man. How does that happen? It is not normal. It is not due process. There's nothing about process and protocol about this. This is, this is a man that entered a new that was bigger than him. He entered something that was greater than him. This is how Haman, from the back, moved and passed even Memukan. Memukan that had the ears of the king. That was the one that spoke concerning Vashti. And everybody did the same. Even Memukan. Even Memun, look at your neighbor, tell him even Memukan. That is how Haman passed all of them. And when Haman became number one, I need you to understand why, why Haman was so privileged. Haman did not just become number one. Nobody, if you now read the Bible from the time Haman came up, there was no time that the king ever called these seven men again. Everything became Haman. Every decision was about Haman now. Hey man, hey man goes to meet him about a law, to write a law, to destroy the nation Israel. Normally, if Vashti, Vashti is not as big as a whole nation, and yet he had to consult seven princes before he took a decision. But when Haman came and met him, concerning a whole nation, he didn't consult anybody. He just told him, oh, yes, you have said, go and do. When he was looking for who to, what to do to Mordecai, how to bless Mordecai, he said, who is at the outer court? And they told him, Haman is out there. He calls Haman and asks Haman. Haman told him what to do. He did not call any other seven princes. He did as Haman said. Haman took over. Haman now became the only person that had the ears of the king. This is a promotion and advancement. And they did not just promote and advance him. The Bible says as well, and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. That's his seat. There's a seat. He, everybody, all of us here, we have a seat somewhere in destiny. First mistake Haman made. Haman, how could you have had, I took time to establish this so that you understand his mistakes. How could you have all these things going for you? God blessed you so much as far as I'm concerned. It's not man-made. And all of this finished happening. How could you have forgotten where you came from? How could you have forgotten? First mistake, he forgot where he came from. He forgot where he was picked from. That he was number 10 or number 50 or number 100 or number 8. And you were moved and you were passed. You passed every other person in the whole province to become number one. How could you have forgotten? Please hear me as I hear the Lord. No matter what happens in this season, no matter how big, because the new that is coming is going to be bigger, it will blow your mind. When it comes, please, please don't ever forget. Don't ever forget when it comes. Please remember that you're not the person that put yourself there. You didn't plant yourself there. Psalms chapter 75 verse 6 to 7 says, from promotion does not come from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. God is the judge. That's verse 7. Can you go to verse 7? God is the judge. He pulls, he put it down one and set it up another. For every time you enjoy a new level, God does something for you. Please always remember, it is God that placed you there. You didn't plant yourself there. Don't ever think it's your effort, your hard work, your connection. Maybe uh, uh, I knew somebody or it is what I did. No, no, no. It has nothing to do with you. Because it is only God that will decide who takes that seat or not. 
So please never forget. That was one of the mistakes Amen made. That he forgot that see, how can I have passed my Mukan and all these people? And right now I am the only person the king is listening to. How can I take that for granted? Please never take it for granted. Wherever you find yourself, remember. Always remember that. Remember where you're coming from. Whenever you remember where you're coming from, it will keep you humble. It will keep you humble. I'm going to be running. Second, second mistake came and made. He allowed his new to get into his head. He allowed what God had done for him, this new that had come, to enter his head. He started to see himself. He had a picture that was larger than life. God begins to bless you with some money. Give you some cars. Begins to make things easy for you. Gives you a beautiful house. Gives you, you know, you just print. Things are just aligning and adding up. And it's easy that you just start thinking that, uh, you know, you just start having a false sense of who you are. He began to have a force. He had this larger than life picture of himself. That's why he would see Mordecai and the gate. And he would say, can you imagine? How can Mordecai not bow to me? Every other person was bowing. Only Mordecai, that's not your problem. It is because of how he saw himself. Every other, why don't he focus on every other person that is doing it and ignore the one that is not doing it? But instead, he was concerned about this one Mordecai that is not doing, that is not bowing. And he starts to move. Can you imagine? He's not bowing to me. Does he know who I am? Does he know I have the ear of the king? Does he know in one word I speak to the king? Everything will just change about his life. Who are you? Please, in this season and in your journey, as God brings you into your new, don't ever forget. Don't ever, don't ever allow it to get into your head. Be careful of what you are allowed to get into your head. Esther 3, 4 to 5. Esther chapter 3, 4 to 5. Now it came to pass, when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told him and to see whether Mordecai's matter would stand. For he had told them that he was a Jew. And when Haman, now do you know in this verse 4 and 5 we read, you know the people that were talking to Haman was the servants. The servants had been complaining to Mordecai, won't you bow, won't you bow? As he refused to bow, they now say, let them go and report him to Haman and see what Haman would do. When you enter your new season, when you come into your new, because you have entered your new, there will always be people like that servant. They will always come to advise you, to tell you what to do, to tell you how to do it. They will want to direct you. They will want to lead you. They won't even tell you how things used to be done. And all, and at times when they are doing all this, is to see what you will do. Please, there are people that you don't take advice from. There are people you don't listen to. They can speak to you, but never allow their voice to be louder than the voice of reason. Never allow their voice because the truth is that you may not be able to stop them from coming to talk to you, but you can stop their voice from entering your head. Don't allow their voice to be louder than the voice of caution or the voice of the Holy Spirit in your journey. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, be careful of who you listen to in your journey. Hallelujah. The third mistake came and made when you, when your new comes, be careful of what you allow to grow. Be careful what you allow to grow. That was a mistake he made. He wasn't careful of what he allowed to grow. Haman allowed anger grow. The Bible says in verse 5 and 6, and when Haman saw, that's in chapter 3, and when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reference, then was Haman full of wrath. Can we, we read chapter 6, and he taught scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone. I, I was wondering, what is this taught scorn to lay hands on Mordecai? What does this thing mean? I went to, go to message translation. See, see Haman. Verse 6, message translation. Meanwhile, having learned that Mordecai was a Jew, him and hated to waste his fury on just one Jew. He looked for a way to eliminate not just Mordecai, but all Jews throughout the whole kingdom of Exodus. Do you understand? No, let me read it again. Haman hated to waste his fury on just one person. As in he was angry. And he thought this anger... It's, it's too much to waste it on only Mordecai. So the kind of anger he had in his heart was enough to kill a whole nation. He said it, it is a waste of anger to just be using it on one man. What is in my heart is it's, it's the kind of thing that should everybody, can you imagine the kind of anger? How did anger grow that big? That you don't even want to do just to one person. You see everything, the whole nation. Do you know what the whole nation is? Like now, the whole of Nigeria like this. Or, or a people, which people now? Uh, the Igbo tribe. Or, you know, or the Europe. You know, a tribe. You just say, I will wipe all of them wherever they are in Nigeria. 
for one man's mistake, something or something you squabble you're having with one man. I, I, I read this and I said, he man hated to waste his fury. He hated to waste <laughs> to, to waste it on one person. How did anger grow like that? How did you allow yourself get to that place? And you know, fury is wild or violent anger. Wrath. For some of us, it may not be anger. Some of us, it might be lies. It might be deception. Some of us, it might be infidelity, immorality. Some of us, it might be lack of integrity. When you get to the top, when God begins to raise you, when God begins to open these doors, be careful of what you allow to grow. Most times, the things that bring men down are the little foxes. These things we call little, little. But they start little, but they begin to grow. Before you know it, it finishes a man. Ayakata. This was what brought Naaman to where he got to. Can you raise your hand and say, I'm not a man? I can say, I'm not a man. No, find your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I'm not a man. No. I will not make the same mistakes a man made. I will not make mistakes that will cut my joy short. Is it too long? Say, I will not make mistakes that will cut my joy, my new shot. If you believe it, let your amen thunder three times. The fourth mistake Haman made, Haman loved to be, at the, to be the center of attention. He loved to be the center of attention. Let everything revolve around me. Let me, let me give you examples. He, he, can you remember when he said in, um, uh, that was Esther 5 verse 9 to, okay, before that, let's go to Esther 6. Esther 6, when the Bible talked about, and let's look at it in message translation. Esther 6 verse 6. When um, the king was wanted to um, do something for Mordecai, and he was wondering what he would be done to Mordecai, and the, and the servants had already told him that Haman was outside at the, uh, the, at the court. And when he came in, the Bible says, when Haman entered, the king said, what would be appropriate for the man the king, especially wants to honor. Hey, man thought to himself, he must be talking about honoring me. Who else? Who else? Why can't it be somebody else? Is it only you? As in the one God has done for you, you are not still, aren't you still celebrating it? You still want everything to be around you. He said, is it, who else? And that was why he said the things he said. Another place, you see that in Esther 5, 9 to 13, the Bible says, hey, man left the palace that day happy, beaming. I think I'm using message translation. Haman left the palace that day happy beaming. This after he had eaten with Esther and the king. And then he saw Mordecai sitting at the king's gate, ignoring him, oblivious to him. Haman was furious with Mordecai, but he held himself in and went on home. He got to his friends together with his wife Zeresh and started bragging about how much money he had. His many sons, all the times the king had honored him, and his promotion to the highest position in the government. On top of all that, Haman continued after all this brag. On top of the Haman said, Queen Esther invited me to a private dinner she gave for the king, just the three of us. Don't be like Haman. Don't be like a man. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.31 says, therefore, as the scripture says, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. If you are going to boast, he was boasting. And at the, I, it's me they are doing it for. I am the center. Things are revolving around me. When your new comes, allow, sorry, I'm going to use this thing that we used to say. When your new comes, allow other people to breed. Allow people to breed. When your new comes. Before your new came, some others were already in their new. After your new comes, some other people will still experience their new. The king wants to favor someone. Why must it be you? And can I speak to leaders here? Leaders, allow those under you grow. Allow them grow. Allow them to fly. Allow them express themselves. Give them opportunities to grow and be more. Every training must not be only you that is going for it. When benefits come, things are coming to your table, good, good things. It must not stop and end at your table. Let it get to other people. Remember the testimony of the NSPPDian. The NSPPDian gave a testimony about how uh, his boss uh, was poisoning him and doing all. It's his boss. Your boss is already up there. How can you be up there and you're disturbing someone that is down? Am I making sense? So, and another thing you notice here is that Esther and Mordecai were in their season of celebration because this, 
Haman came in chapter 3. Chapter 2 was all about Esther being made queen and all the, all the beautiful things that happened when she became queen. That was what we were talking about the feast of Esther. Too many beautiful things were happening in chapter 2. Then chapter 2 ended with Mordecai uh, exposing Bigna and Teresh for you know wanting to assassinate the king. So, so things were happening for them. Hey man, you now show up. You now make it look as if these people did not have anything that was going on for them. No, things were happening. So, you know, and this brings me to a point. How does one man come and and get a law signed that affects the whole nation. And it's still, I may still go back to leaders. I don't know why I'm after leaders today. But every one of us, we are leaders in our own right. Please, rule or lead with empathy. Lead with empathy. That you are at the top. And you don't feel what they are feeling. Does not mean that you make laws or policies that will not be, that you will not consider these people that are down. Because if he was thinking, this is a nation, these are people, what or if it was your own people, Lunko? But because it's not about you, it's about the Jew, you don't care. Please, in leading, we must strike a balance. Let me be running. Let me run. Fifth mistake Haman made. He was expecting everyone to like him or treat him the same way. He wanted everybody to like him. Unfortunately, everybody cannot like you. The earlier we accept it, that no matter how nice you are, there are people that will even be upset that you are nice. When you are smiling, they'll be upset you are smiling. You dress where they say, hey, is she the only one? See how she's dressed. What, do you, what will we do that? What will we do that, you, that will be okay with you? There's nothing. And this is, this is, hey man, please hear me really, really. This is, at times, just weigh things. Every other person is bowing. The only person not bowing at the gate is Mordecai. Is that enough reason that you will leave focus of the job that they called you to do as the number one now? Do focus on your job. Leave Mordecai alone. Leave him alone. And that was the problem he had. Don't expect everyone to like you or support you. When God places everything, they may not support you. They may not give you the desired support. And if they do, awesome. But if they don't, it's fine. The, what I will advise you to do is just focus and do that your work. Do it well. Evidence will speak for itself. It's either maybe one day they will not like you. But even if they don't, just stay and do your work. Like Papa will say, at times God leaves that one person. That Papa will always say, at times God leaves that one person. So that the person will be that, that person that humbles you, just keeps you humble. At times he says that God may leave that person so that you learn to love the unlovable. He also said at times God will just leave the person there just so that the person will help you to be stretching and building capacity. Whatever reason the person has been placed there, no wahala, let the person be there. But please, before, you know I'm rushing, I hope I'm not running too fast, but please hear me. If you are that person, change. We are accepting that we can work with that person, but if that kind of person is here, Mordecai, the Mordecai that will not bow, we know why Mordecai did not bow, but you understand what I'm saying. If you're that person that will not give your leader support, you will not, you will, you will use one mouth, you will speak with one mouth, you smile, but behind you are not smiling, you know what you are saying. Please change. 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 Be nice to the people God has placed over you. Just imagine if you were in their shoe and you were being treated the same way. Instead of making their work more difficult, help them, support them, and make it easier for them. Can we do that? Are we doing that? Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, that's who I am. Tell your neighbor, that's who I am. Tell your neighbor, I won't make the mistakes of him, man. I won't make the mistakes of him, man. Are we being blessed? What number am I in now? What am I supposed to do now? Number, the sixth mistake. The sixth mistake. Hey, man attacked the result of Esther and Mordecai. There are people you shouldn't fight. There are battles you shouldn't even start. He attacked the result of Mordecai and Esther. Do you know what I mean by him attacking their result? Esther was queen. If Haman had succeeded in what he wanted to do, what would have happened? Esther, that's they would have killed Esther. Esther's queenship would have been short-lived. This enjoyment that this orphan girl God has brought her into would just end like that. If what he planned happened, even Mordecai would have died and they would have not been that. You see the king rewarding or all the things or where uh, Mordecai got to, these things would have been short-lived. So he came to attack their result. And I want to pray for someone. I want us to make it a prayer. As your two hands are lifted, any power that will try to attack your result uh, in this season of your new, as your amen will thunder the loudest, let slapping angels slap them down. Let slapping angels slap them down. Let slapping angels slap them down. I cannot hear your amen. 
peace take your state. No power will attack your result. The Bible talks about the dragon in Revelation chapter 12. The Bible says that this dragon did not come for the woman. He didn't come for her. All the while she was in her first trimester, second trimester, third trimester, he did not show. Even when she was due, he, didn't, he was just waiting. Let this baby come. I'm not after you. I want your result. Any power waiting for you. And monitoring you just so that this result, you see this new that wants to come. Let us, let us scatter this new. Let us take your new so that it will not last. As they are planning, let judgment from heaven, uh, let judgment of fire strike them down. Uh, strike them down. Uh, strike them down. Any man that will stay in his new must remember the battle isn't over when your new comes. That's when the battle just started. The battle is not over when your new comes. That was one thing Esther had to understand. That as I have become queen, we just started. It was after queenship, when she became queen, is it queenship? As after when she became queen, that she now had to do three days dry fast. Let me not be ahead of myself. Seventh mistake, and I'm going to end here. 5 verse 15, chapter 5 verse 15. I'm going to stop here. Then said Zeresh his wife and all his friends unto him, let a gallow be made of 50 cubits high. And tomorrow speak thou unto the king that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. The first time I ever felt pity for Haman was in this verse. I have never felt pity for Haman before. But yesterday... I read this scripture and I just felt pity for him. And I said, what if he was advised differently? He did not think it by himself to go and do gallows. It was his wife and all his friends that he consulted that said, prepare a gallows. Unknown to him, he was preparing his death sentence. He was preparing what he would use in killing himself. And I pray for someone today. You see, before I make this prayer, the mistake he made here, this seventh mistake, is that he surrounded himself with useless, foolish, wicked people like himself. Useless, foolish, and wicked people like himself. He surrounded himself with them. And I pray for you in this season. You see, as your new has come, may you not be surrounded with useless people, foolish people, wicked people. In the name of Jesus. May God bring you in the company of people that are wiser than you. May God gift you with wise men and wise women. Your amen does not sound like you know you need it. If the enemy wants to destroy you, all he needs to do is to bring the wrong relationship your way. And it's the same thing with God. And I pray in this season, you see, any yamanyama person that will try to come in to spoil what God has started in your life, let fire chase them away. And if they are already there right now in your life and they are giving you nonsense advice, may your eyes be open to see what they are doing to you in the name of Jesus. Both his wife and all his friends advised him to prepare a gallop. They advised him on how to arrange for his own death. The circle you keep can actually speed up your death or destruction. If all Esther told the king, see, if all Esther had told the king was, him and wants to destroy us, kill us, I am thinking that that punishment may have been lighter. Maybe uh, in the prison, life imprisonment, something. But what was in Haman's case was not just that. It wasn't just that uh, the king now came and saw him trying to, you know, when he was trying to beg. No, that was not even just what was in it. It was in Esther 7, 9 to 10. And Habona, one of the chamberlains, said before the king, Behold also the gallows 50 cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who spoken good for the king, standed in the house of Haman. Then the king said, hang him there on. Can I, let, let me do an aside. Anybody that has dug something or prepared gallo for you, they have already prepared how you're going to go down. And they are waiting for the day of execution. Because all Haman was doing was he was just waiting for the time to do what, he came to talk to the king about that matter and he was overtaken by events. Anybody that has prepared your gallo, prepared your pit, prepared a trap, whether for you, your children, your spouse, a loved one, as your amen will thunder, we command whatever they have prepared, let it swallow them. We send it back to sender, back to sender. You did not hear me, the same way, the same gallo hung Hey man, uh, let their trap catch them. Uh, let their feet swallow them. Uh, let their gallows hang them. Uh, in the name of Jesus. 
sit down. I'm about to end. And that was the last straw. As far as that was concerned, that was the last straw. And the king said, eh, eh, you have, you have, how did they say you have beaten more than you can chew? And what if they had advised him? In Esther 6.13, the Bible says, and Haman told Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends, everything that had befallen him. I want them to show us so that you will see this thing with me. Am I reading the same translation with you? And Haman told Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends, yes, everything that had befallen him. Then said his wise men and Zeresh, his wife, unto him. Excuse me, when did they become wise men? No, you do not understand. We read about them. It's these same people we read about in chapter, uh, which chapter? We read about them in chapter 5, verse 15. Let's go back to 5, 15. And I'm ending here. Then said Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends unto him. See it Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends unto him. Let a gallop be made. Now, let's go back to chapter 6, verse 13. And Haman told Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends, the same all his friends, everything that had befallen him, then said his wise men. When did they become wise? When they were given that, so meaning that for him to have called them, they were wise men. They were wise men, he called and sought their advice. And they told him, prepare a gallop. Then right now, they announced, that, hmm, this thing, eh, this the way you have started funny. Why didn't they give, even if it's not these exact words, why didn't they give this type of advice from the beginning? If they gave him that advice from the beginning, will he be where he is? But after he has finished doing that thing that is going to cause his death, you are now telling him, you see, you see, oh my God. So you see, that's that. How did wise men turn foolish in this season when he needed them to be wise? How did they turn foolish? Because right now, they are now called wise men. Meaning that they were supposed to be wise men. May your wise men and wise women not turn foolish when you need them to be wise. When you need the counsel of wise men, may they not give you the counsel of foolishness. You didn't hear me. It is difficult to tell the difference at this point. Especially when people have been wise. Ahitophel is the case in point. Ahitophel had always been known as a wise counsel or counselor. Second Samuel 6.23 and the counsel of Ahitophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of God. So was all the counsel of Ahitophel, both with David and with Absalom. He was known for wisdom, both David and Absalom. So when David made the prayer and said, turn Ahitophel's counsel to foolishness, Ahitophel himself did not even know there had been an exchange. So he was still speaking the way he used to speak. Unknown to him, it is foolishness that is coming out. Exchange had taken place. Wise counsel remove foolishness in your mouth. You are still talking like a wise man. Absalom himself had no idea that the person he's not listening to is foolishness that is coming out of his mouth. May you have discernment in this season. Ali Braka, you don't understand. Ali Braka, when wise men don't know that their wisdom has been exchanged to foolishness, they become a mockery to their generation. When they have no idea, I will say it again, when wise men don't know that their wisdom has been exchanged to foolishness, they become a mockery to their generation. In all you do, may you always be able to discern wisdom from foolishness. Or discern when wisdom has turned to foolishness. And finally, Haman used his own resources. He used his own resources to buy his debt. I pray for someone today. You will not use your own resources to buy your own death sentence. You will not put your money into something that will kill you. You will not put your money into something that will destroy you. All of businessmen, people that do investment, you will not make an investment that will ruin you. You will not carry your money and go and put in a place that you say it was after that day everything spot in my life. Wherever and any and wherever that is waiting for you in the future. Today we take a journey to the future and we decree it will not happen.